Eminence Daily Series presents Applications Unknown. Today featuring the City of Optimization. The City of Optimization is located in the Engineering Atlantic, just below the Eastern Republic of Differential Equations and just left of the People's Republic of Calculus. It's a city that has made a remarkable impact in the engineering area of Mathematicon. To give us an introduction to the city and a tour of the city, we have invited the governor, Mr. Gradient Descent, to show us around a little bit. Mr. Descent, please tell us a little bit about your city. Thank you. Well, optimization is used, for instance, when you have to find the shortest path in maps. For instance, if you give a route in your navigator in your car, then typically the navigator will use an optimization algorithm to find the shortest path between two points. So for instance, let's assume you want to travel from the white city to the red city. Well, one way to do this is just to start traveling around. You can see the path we just showed it has a total distance of 10 km. However, if you ask an optimizer to make the route as short as possible, then you might find this path which, if you look closely, is a bit shorter, it is only 9 km, and that is typically the task of an optimization algorithm. It is to find extremal answers to certain questions, in this case to find the shortest path. And this shortest path is called the minimum, and that is what the optimization algorithm will deliver you. Optimization is also used in the engineering branch, for instance, when you are building bridges. So, for instance, one way to build a bridge is to use a triangular structure. So, you can use triangles to lay out the materials in your bridge. However, you can also use rectangles. <laughs> rectangles is another option to build a bridge. And there are many, many other ways to build bridges. However, engineers are faced with a demanding question when building bridges, and that is to use as little material as possible so that the bridge is not too heavy, in other words, so that it does not fall in in itself, but also to build the bridge as strong as possible. This is extremely important and this is an optimization problem. What you can do is you can formulate the problem as follows. You, let, you look at all possible ways to build the bridge and then you ask yourself which one of these ways gives me the strongest bridge as possible with the little least amount of material that I needed to build the bridge. And this is what optimization does. It is a numerical technique to tell you the way to build a bridge with as little material as possible but so that it is as strong as possible. So basically, optimization is really like finding the lowest point in a valley. And that's also what one of the main techniques in optimization does, and this is called the technique of gradient descent. Namely, let's assume that you are given this value that I've shown you here. Well, how would you find the lowest point in this valley? Well, you would do it by simply putting a ball somewhere, and then you would let gravity act on this ball and take, and you just let the ball roll down on itself. So in this case, this ball would just roll down the valley until it reaches this more, the lowest point in the valley. This is called gradient descent, and I believe that later in your show you will say a little bit more about this. Yes, Mr. Descent, that is correct. Later in my show I will speak a little bit more about this. Well, that's, that's very good, because it is an extremely important technique in optimization and is used everywhere in engineering. However, there are also other problems of optimization. For instance, if you look at this valley here, you can see that the lowest point in the valley is towards the right, the point at the, in the right of the thing. However, if you start from the left and you let the ball roll, you will see that it will roll just to this point here. This is called a local minimum, because it is locally in a small neighborhood around it, it is the smallest point. However, it is not the smallest point globally, it's just locally around it, the lowest point, or the smallest point, and so it is called a local minima. But to really get to the, to really the global minima, to get really to the lowest point in the whole valley, 
you have to escape from this lowest point somehow. So you have to climb up the hill and then back down again. And the algorithms which does this in practice are called global optimization techniques. Well, thank you, Mr. Gradient Descent. Thank you for giving us that insight into your city. That's a pleasure. Bye-bye. So let me summarize. Optimization really is the process of making something as small as possible by mathematical processes. It is used in building bridges. It is used in designing microchips. It is, looking for, it is used in looking for the shortest paths in navigation systems. It is even used in designing camera lenses. And it is used in many other processes like, for instance, reducing costs in manufacturing processes. Now, if there is one thing that has set himself through in the city of optimization, then it is the process of gradient descent. And this is something I would like to give you very shortly an idea of what this is and how it works. Let's assume I give you a function f of x. And f of x is displayed in this way. Now, I ask you, what is the smallest point of f of x? And it is this red point that is given here. How would you solve this problem? Well, for us humans, this is easy because we can just look at the graph and we can see what the smallest point in the graph is. However, for a computer, this is extremely difficult. A computer does not know just by looking at a graph or of a function what the smallest point is. You see, a computer is a machine that works in logical steps. You really need to give a logical procedure to a computer to find the smallest point. So how does this work? Well, you do this by letting the computer choose any point x value that you like to start with. And then what you do is you calculate the height of the function. So you can imagine this function as being some sort of valley. Is representing some sort of value. Then what you do is you look at the tangent of the function at that point. Now we know that a tangent very similarly describes the function locally around that point. And so what we do, we look at the tangent and we ask ourselves, is this tangent going down when we go to the right or is this tangent going up when we go to the right. And in our case, we see that if we follow the tangent, then we will be going down if we move to the right. And so that gives us a very good indication that the function becomes smaller if we move to the right. And so what we do is we simply do that. We move the ball to the right, and then we let the ball fall again. At that point, we can calculate the tangent again. And then we will see the tangent goes down if we move to the right. And so it just gives us a good indication that the function will become smaller if we move to the right. And so we do this again. And so we move to the right and again we let the ball fall. And we keep on doing this until we reach a point where we cannot move anymore. And this is typically a local minimum. And this is the smallest point on the curve. Now you might ask yourself, why did we have to move in small steps? The reason for this is because the tangent only approximates the function in a very small neighborhood around the point that you are interested in. I don't want to say too much about this, but for me as Dr. Taylor series, this is a very personal matter and because the reason why tangents approximate functions around small points is because of the so-called Taylor series expansion theory, which comes from the Republic of Calculus. Anyway, before I leave you today, I would like to ask you one question that you can think about. My question would be, in which direction would the tangent be pointing at this local minimum? Would it be pointing up? Would it be pointing down? Or is it just pointing horizontally? And that is something you can think about. Anyway, Thank you for joining us today and see you next time.